I don't understand something, okay? I taught in high school for 10 years. During those 10 years, I taught geometry every single year. I taught some other math courses as well. I taught algebra two, I taught pre-calculus and calculus and physics. I taught geometry all 10 years. In the last four years, I taught AP Computer Science A. That's a Java or a programming course. Now, that course was for seniors and it was an elective. So in other words, our students can choose whether or not to take computer science, but we won't let them graduate without taking a geometry course. Do you know how many times I was asked teaching geometry? How are we going to use this in real life? They, they would just get so frustrated. This is the 21st century. We're teaching geometry. Now I have my answer to the question. The answer to the question is geometry teaches you how to build logical arguments. And that's true. But the joke of the class is that it teaches you an invaluable skill, logical arguments, something that you will use as a lawyer in a court case, a doctor would use in order to diagnose a disease, a marketer would use in order to build a strategy for a client, an entrepreneur would use when pitching a business to an investor. Building a logical argument, absolutely invaluable, but the joke of geometry is that you teach the invaluable skill in a completely irrelevant course. Aside from trigonometry, which I've used for some lighting designs when I was doing theater way back when, I have never proved two triangles were congruent in a practical way. I've never met somebody who has. I've never met somebody who's argued that that's relevant. And I don't understand why is that the course that's required for graduation and computer science is the elective? Is it not abundantly evident that all of the important skills from geometry could be conveyed in a computer science course and that we could build a more competitive workforce by having every student be required to take computer science? And do you know, or can you guess how many students have asked me, how am I going to use this in real life? in the computer science class that I've taught. And one of the biggest problems is that while I was a kid back in the 90s and like early 2000s, and I was in class, we didn't have social media, we didn't have the connected world. My teachers said, trust me, you're going to need this in college, and I was willing to buy into it. Like, oh, I'm gonna need this in college? Well, one, I believed that college was absolutely necessary for success in life, and two, I believed if my teachers said it was valuable, then they knew better than I, and I knew it was value. But our students today, with social media and the way that our world is connected, can see through anything that teachers are putting in front of them. And if they are lying and saying that something like geometry is important and it's not, the students are going to know exactly what the truth is, and they're going to be skeptical, rightfully so, and they're not going to do well in their class. I don't understand how we can teach American history and not entrepreneurship. I don't understand how we can teach math and not personal finance. I don't understand how we can teach Newtonian physics, but we don't teach how cryptocurrency works. The very fact that students don't know how credit works or like how loans work or how to handle debt, we send them for crying out loud to colleges to take on college debt without having taught them what that even means. And I spent my years teaching geometry. Like, it's amazing to me. Why was I teaching geometry? And I mean like, and I even like geometry and I think there are some things about it that are very beautiful. I really love math. I really think it's creative and elegant and that there is a habit of thinking that is available and discoverable in math that I cannot imagine my life without. However, that's not what math means to a high school student, is it? To a high school student, math is routine and procedures and memorization. That is what comes across because that is what tests evaluate. And as long as there are exams that are evaluating the ability to memorize procedures and facts, that is what math is going to be about. So if you wanna change what's being communicated when you try to teach students on math, you have to change the assessment. And I mean like, I, I, I managed, I managed. And you know why I managed? Because every year, 
towards the end of my career. It took me too long to figure this out, but every year I'd start my class and I'd say this on the very first day, I need you to know something. Your exam scores don't mean anything to me. I don't need to see you do well on an exam. I don't need to see you memorize geometry facts. I don't need to see you regurgitate procedures. I do not care. What I care about, and I would literally stand in front of the class and talk like this, what I care about is your ability to solve problems. That is what matters. That is what this class is for. And the way that is assessed is not through exams. Now, I am making gross generalizations and I know that. And I also know that while I may be complaining on like a big picture of what curricula look like in the United States, there are thousands of teachers that are working to innovate and engage their students in the classrooms that we have today. And they are making changes that begin in their classrooms right now. And I am honored and privileged and so proud to have been a part of Math for America for 11 years where I participated in a cohort of teachers that were doing that around the clock and meeting professionally to collaborate and share innovations and change their classrooms for the better. It is happening and I am so relieved that it is. I'm also very proud of the work that I've started with Mastery Portfolio and how we're trying to change assessment. But for now, I know that I am going to be focusing my channel on education, maintaining the focus on like finance and technology, but also trying to target the things that I think are wrong in education and how it can be fixed. Before I post this video, I need to close with something because usually when I share these opinions, I'm talking to other adults at like parties or get togethers or play dates or whatever. And I'm telling them about my experience as a teacher, but on YouTube, this is probably going to be watched by kids, kids who are taking geometry right now. And for those of you who are students and are watching this video, I want to tell you the same thing that I would tell my students, which is that, there are disadvantages in our education system. There always will be. It doesn't matter if you live in the United States or anywhere else in the world, you're going to encounter problems. Nothing is perfect. Don't take the things that I'm saying and hold it against your geometry teacher. Whether or not we like it, Geometry is being taught for a good reason, and that reason is problem solving and developing logical arguments. Even though the material itself may be arbitrary or lacking in practical substance, that doesn't mean we can't use it as an exercise in disciplined thinking. The problems that you encounter, as fruitless as they might seem, proving one triangle is congruent to another triangle, will hone your ability to think and take the pieces of a puzzle, in this case the axioms or the theorems that you've been taught so far, and put them together into something that is cohesive and makes sense. So let's take it for what it is and what we can get from it as we get it right now. And maybe in the future, computer science will be required and geometry will be an elective. And that could be really cool. Maybe other things will be restructured. Maybe school will change beyond my wildest dreams. But the fact of the matter is that right now in 2020, geometry is still a required course in many, many school systems. So let's just use it to the greatest advantage we possibly can. And don't give up on your teacher or your class. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something valuable. Take care.